When it comes to fully electric pickup trucks, Ford really got the jump start on the rest of the industry when they introduced the first ever F-150 Lightning back in 2021. Remember, the Lightning name has been around in previous years as a supercharged high-performance truck, but Ford appropriately brought it back as a fully electric version of America's best-selling vehicle. Now, since then, we've seen the industry continue to grow and change with electric vehicles starting to wane a little bit in terms of demand. So as you can see, this week, Ford has loaned me the Mac Daddy of the F-150 Lightning trims. This one here is a 2024 Lightning Platinum trim, which means it basically has all the bells and whistles, including the larger extended range battery pack, nearly 600 horsepower under the hood, and up to 300 miles of range on a full charge. So if you guys are still in the market for a fully electric vehicle, how does the 2024 F-150 Lightning continue to stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, I've never had a chance to show you guys basically a full in-depth review on the fully loaded Platinum version, but before we start talking about the exterior styling differences, let me go ahead and pop open the frunk, and this is what Ford calls a mega power frunk. It's one of the largest frunks in the industry, and it was one of the big show-stopping features of the Lightning when it first came out about two years ago. Now, as you can see, there is a massive storage compartment here up front because there is no engine. This is a fully electric vehicle, and every version of the Lightning comes with this mega power frunk. Even the base Pro has that power actuated frunk, and there's around 14 cubic feet of space back in here. You can see it's covered. Uh, it's basically lockable. There's also some underfloor storage underneath here, which is crazy. This can hold up to 400 pounds, and you also have power outlets in here, four of them along with two USB-C charging ports. Remember, this essentially has the ability to power your house house for up to like 10 days, depending on the actual usage. Uh, so this right here is a game changer. It's essentially the same size as a lot of trunks that you'll find in a compact to mid-size sedan. But let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain specs since we're underneath here. This model here comes standard with the extended range battery pack at 131 kilowatt hours. It has dual electric motors front and rear that's standard on every Lightning. And this vehicle del delivers 580 horsepower, 775 pound-feet of torque. It all goes out through a single speed reduction gear transmission. Ford essentially claims you can do zero to 60 in around four seconds for this truck. So we'll, we'll test it out with our equipment and see what we can get. Uh, it has a top speed of around 112 miles an hour and it's a truck, so you need to be able to do truck things. This model here, the Platinum can, can tow a maximum of 8,600 pounds and it'll carry about 1,600 pounds of payload in the bed. Uh, and in terms of the curb weight, because this is built off of a regular F-150 frame with a battery pack in between, it's pretty heavy. As this truck sits, it weighs in at just under 7,000 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up the frunk. You can see you just push that button here and it'll shut for you automatically, which is nice. The exterior styling of the F-150 hasn't really changed. Um, Ford just gave the regular F-150 a pretty big refresh for 2024, which as you can see, isn't carried over onto the Lightning. I suspect Ford will do that probably for the 2025 model year, but this platinum grade is painted in this really beautiful color called Azure Blue Gray Tint Tri-Coat. It's essentially $800 extra. It has this beautiful metallic fleck in it. It looks good with the lines of the F-150. Uh, you can see this model here comes with the full LED headlights as standard. You have LED low and high beams, LED daytime running lights, the signature LED light uh, bar that kind of connects the two headlights together. And then the grill kind of has a glossy gray metallic finish with this kind of geometric texture in the grill. Remember, there's no openings here because this is a fully electric truck. There is one opening down here that allows for a little bit of cooling uh, to go back there. There are front tow hooks. Uh, and then you can see here, if you guys didn't know this is fully electric, you probably wouldn't be able to tell unless you knew about the fact that the grill being closed up. Now, the Lightning only comes as basically one cab configuration. You get the Super Crew four full-size doors with a five and a half foot bed, which means the overall length is 232 inches long. It has a 145 inch long wheelbase which is the same size as the gas uh, F-150. You can see the wheels, these are unique to the platinum grade. They're a 22 inch wheel. These are the biggest wheels you can get on the Lightning. Uh, they're wrapped in a 275 by 50 R22. These do lower the range by about 20 miles compared to the 20 inch wheels on the Lariat. Uh, you can see I like the two-tone machine with the black inner pockets. The suspension is independent front and independent rear. So this is the first F-150 to get a fully independent suspension, which is great, although no air suspension and no four-wheel steering. That would be nice to see in a vehicle this big. You can see your charge port door is located here on the passenger or the driver's side fender. And this model here still has the CCS combo plug. Ford says starting in the spring of 2024, they will be building all their electric vehicles with the NAC Tesla charger. And Ford says by that time, you should also be able to use the Tesla supercharging network 
For now, you'll have to use an adapter, but this truck can hold, can, can accept up to 150 kilowatts. So you can go from 15 to 80% in about 41 minutes. So that's average charging time. Uh, the GMC Hummer EV technically will charge faster, but that has such a bigger battery pack that it actually will charge in about the same amount of time on a 350 uh, kilowatt charger. You can see the mirrors are power folding, integrated turn signal mirrors. You can also get tow mirrors. Uh, you'll have a camera integrated here integrated turn signals, blind spot monitoring, and then you can see here keyless entry keypad that Ford typically does. There's a big panoramic glass roof that's standard on the Lightning, or on the Platinum trims, which is great. And then you can see here from this angle, the truck just looks like any other F-150, which is what I really appreciated about the Lightning. Unlike, you know, the Tesla Cybertruck or the Chevrolet Silverado EV or the Sierra EV, um, this truck just looks like a conventional truck. And I think that's what's going to appeal to a lot of truck people. Aside from the Lightning badge here on the side, uh, which has a really cool Lightning script, the rear also has, you know, a unique design with these newly uh, designed taillights, which have that signature light bar. Reverse lights are built into the center. You have full LED taillights, as you can see. And then there's also a little lightning badge here with the American flag to showcase that this vehicle is built in America, which is great. Um, this model here, as you can see, already includes the tow hitch. There's a full size spare underneath here. And then if you want to open up the tailgate or the yeah, the to reveal the bed, basically, my tester has a optional spray in bed liner along with the uh, hard tonneau cover, which is nice. There's also the Pro Power on board, uh, which is a really useful feature for you guys who go camping, who need to use you know stuff in your, or who need to like power your house if in case the power goes out. And this model here will carry a maximum of 1600 pounds of payload in the bed, which is average. Uh, I think lower trims of the Lightning will get a little bit better. You can see there's an integrated tailgate step here, which is really nice. Uh, you also have, you know, actual tools and rulers that you'll find uh, where you can actually use this on the job site. But overall, you can see here, if you push this button, the tailgate will power fold and close itself, although it's a little bit slow. Uh, but overall, you can see if you guys are coming from a regular F-150, it's gonna be a pretty easy transition to go to the Lightning. So now let's move on to the interior of this 2024 F-150 Lightning Platinum. Let me first show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current Ford Intelligent Access key, which has your usual buttons for unlock, lock, open up the frunk, open up the tailgate. No remote start from the actual fob, but if you guys have access to the Ford uh, Connected Services app, you can essentially start the phone using your phone as a key, use the app to kind of start the truck up as well. You can see you can use this keypad to get in the vehicle. There's also a button here that locks the door. If you want to unlock the door, just touch the back of the door handle and that locks the door for you. The F-150 does also have a walk away auto lock feature, which I don't have turned on right now, but it's nice to see that Ford kind of gives you those you know, touches. Now you can see the gray exterior is complemented by this kind of two-tone black and light gray interior. These are the upgraded leather seats that you get with the platinum grade. You can see it has platinum, uh, a platinum badge on the back of the seat back. These are heated and ventilated and they're supposed to be massaging seats, but Ford has removed the massaging seats due to, I guess, supply chain issues still or could have to do with the strike, the UAW strike. The seats adjust in 12 different ways. You have three person memory uh, and they look fantastic. This color is unique to the platinum grade. So it's one of the reasons why you might wanna choose this trim. And then in terms of the rest of the materials on the door panel, you can see you have a microfiber suede, Alcantara, you have leather stitching here. You have some wood grain, genuine wood grain trim. You have auto up down for the front windows, but not for the rear. You have a padded center or, or, or padded armrest here. Hard touch plastic here with more storage. And then you have an 18 speaker b and stereo which sounds fantastic. If you guys are an audiophile, highly recommend that. Down here, it's our hard touch, pla hard touch plastic with a lot of additional storage. And then you also have features like a power adjustable pedals. Now getting in this truck, you can see this mall here has some nice running boards. There's a grab handle here. So kind of for short people like myself, I kind of have to hoist myself in. But once I'm in here, you can see I'll shut the door. It has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember this is built on the same platform as the regular F-150 with a battery pack in between the frames. Uh, now you can see starting the vehicle up, there's a start stop button here where you'd expect it to be. And obviously it's fully electric, so there's no engine starter noise and all lightnings essentially come standard with this fully digital 12-inch uh, instrument panel. And then the upper trims will come with the larger 15.5-inch SYNC 4 infotainment system, which as you can see, it's basically been lifted directly from the Mustang Mach-E. Lower trims will have the 12-inch display that you get on the regular F-150, which is the maximum large you know, display. But this display looks good. Honestly, the 12-inch is fine as well. You don't really need to go with the 15.5-inch. You can see material quality. Uh, it's hard touch plastic on this upper portion, and I do see some fit and finish issues there along the speaker covers there, along this little trim piece. 
where you can see there's a little gap. There are some nicer touches on the Platinum, like the leather stitching along the air vents, along the dashboard over here where there's leather stitching. There's some genuine aluminum and wood trim, which is nice. It's hard touch plastic over here. And then the steering wheel is also unique to the Platinum. You get a kind of interesting look to the Ford logo where it's kind of a platinum silver color as opposed to the blue oval. No paddles on the wheel. Um, you do have, you know, obviously nice leather with contrasting stitching. The wheel itself is a power tilt telescoping, which you can get on the Lariat trim when you go for the uh, upgrade 511 package. The horn, it sounds good. It sounds nondescript. It doesn't sound puny, obviously it's a big truck. Uh, and then uh, in terms of the center stack here, you can see the big screen looks really good. It fits the vastness of this dashboard nicely. You can see uh, there's a volume knob here. You have your heated and ventilated seat controls actually in the uh, screen itself, uh, which is nice. The wireless Apple CarPlay works really well. It looks good. Um, and you can also go back to the main Ford system here where you can see the software behind it is fine. It's a little bit laggy at times. If you wanna adjust your drive mode selector there, you can see as I go through the menus, it just takes a second for it to populate. There's four different drive modes here. There's a one pedal drive, a propulsion sound. You can also turn on and off and uh, electronic locking differential. It kind of functions as that. And then overall, the sync system is relatively easy to use. Uh, it just could use a little bit quick, more quickness in its response. You can see I put it in reverse. There, there's their full 360 camera with trajectory, parking sensors, reverse automatic braking. Uh, the resolution is perfectly acceptable. It's about average for what I expect. I like how the screen essentially takes up uh, the entire display when you have the backup camera on. And then if you go back to the Ford display here, this does have embedded GPS. Most of you will probably end up using your phone anyways. The GPS will route you uh, if you have it you know, set to a destination to charging stations along the way. That's been a thing, of course, with a lot of the Ford vehicles down here. You can see more hard buttons. Your trailer brake controller is here. You have an actual power outlet here, a 12 volt there. You have a wireless phone charging pad here with two USB charging ports. You have a lid that closes up with more of that nice wood. And then the shifter you can see here, this is controlling the one speed reduction gear transmission. If you push that button, that actually folds the shifter down. That's an F-150 feature where you can open this up and create like this table here if you wanna do work or you wanna eat something when you're in the car, which is nice. Uh, unfortunately, this shifter is a little finicky at times because of the design. I also don't think it feels very high quality. Like for example, if I wanna go to reverse here, I'm gonna drive, it just feels a little loosey-goosey. I'm not really a fan of the way this shifter feels. That's kind of the case with all the FM50 models. Now, you can see the Platinum never lets you forget you're in a Platinum from the placker here, from the placker here. Uh, if you open up this, you can see it offers a large center console storage area where you can hide your laptop computer or whatever you'd like to hide. Uh, which is nice. Uh, the seats are comfortable and supportive. I wish it had the massaging feature. I would have loved to try it out, but they removed it, of course, uh, because of the supply chain issues. Um, over here, you can see there's another glove box and a regular glove compartment where you have that two-tier storage, which is nice. I mean, trucks always have a ton of storage, which is great. My tester also has the Blue Cruise function, which is standard on the Platinum, optional on the other trims. It allows for hands-free driving. It's their latest version. It's working well. Ford has been making improvements to it over the years. Uh, which is great. You have an uh, auto dimming review mirror, but no digital camera review mirror, which would be nice to have. You can see the big sunroof is standard on this trim, optional on other trims by, as part of an option package. But overall, you can see the interior is pretty much the same. It doesn't really need changes. It's comfortable, it's spacious, offers a ton of tech and a lot of space. The build quality could be a little bit better considering how expensive this truck is, but at least you have plenty of great tech features, what people want. Now, let me go ahead and show you guys the back seat really quick because the back seat area of the Lightning, just like the regular F-150 is gigantic. You have a little over 41 inches of legroom back here, which is you know pretty much on par with a lot of full-size sedans. The seats themselves are comfortable and supportive. They are three or two stage heated, uh, which is nice. And the truck is so wide, you could easily fit three people across. You can also fold this up to reveal some uh, storage where you can cover some things inside the vehicle or you can use the frunk. Door panel materials, you can see leather stitching with the suede Alcantara padded over here cup holders and you have like a little bit more storage down here along with metal speaker covers. To get inside back here, you can obviously use the door or the grab handle along with the running boards as I get in, shut the door. That's where I have the seat to drive. A ton of leg room as you can see. So you can easily kind of cross, I can easily cross my legs. You can have, you know, six foot tall plus people back here, completely flat floor. You have vents back here. You have two USB charging ports, an actual power outlet, which is nice. And then if you Fold this down, there's an armrest. So if you need to just carry two back here, it's great. You can see that mirror or that window slides uh, slides forward or slides to the side so you can get some vent back here. But overall headroom space, you can see 
If I lean back, my head actually comes kind of close. That glass roof does take up a little bit of headroom space, but overall, if you plan to use this as a family vehicle, just like the gas-powered F-150, the Lightning does offer a ton of space and practicality. So here we are back in the F-150 Lightning, and I have to say, it's been almost two years since Ford revealed this truck, and when I first had a chance to drive the Lightning, I was very impressed. I was blown away even. However, the industry continues to evolve forward. And as you guys know, electric vehicles, a lot of people are seeing the demand for these cars kind of like shrivel. Uh, and the Lightning is very important because this is essentially the electric version of America's best-selling vehicle. And sales have definitely not been what Ford had hoped it to be, which is why they're kind of scaling back on production. And this version that we're driving here is the extended range Platinum. So it's the Mac Daddy of all the Lightnings. I actually haven't had a chance to zero to 60 test this trim, but let's go ahead and see what we can get. We have about a 90% state of charge right now. It is in sport mode and we'll basically just put our foot down. Well, we'll actually we'll brake torque it and then put our foot down. Ooh. <laughs> wow, I forgot how fast these things are. Remember, we have 580 horsepower, 775 pound-feet of torque. It is the most potent uh, of all the F-150 models in terms of the torque output. It even has more torque versus the uh, Raptor R, which has a supercharged V8. Uh, and this zero to 60 time is very impressive. 4.1 seconds is fast. I mean, it's not as fast as the quad motor Rivian R1T, which I still haven't had a chance to film for you guys just yet. Um, and I also haven't had a chance to drive the new Silverado EV. GM has been really, really delayed with actually launching that truck. So Ford has had kind of a head start with the Lightning. And I have to say, if you guys have never driven an electric truck, you're gonna get into this and be very impressed with the power. Let's try it here just from a dead stop, no brake torquing at this time. <laughs> that all-wheel drive grip just puts the power down. There's very little drama. You can just kind of put your foot down. You feel the whole truck. The front end lifts up. The rear squats down. It's just insane. And I also have the propulsion sound on right now, so it's kind of creating a, a fake noise. You can also turn that off via right here if you don't want any of the fake noise and you just want to you know, pile it around in silence. Uh, this truck drives just as good as I remember. It's got an all independent suspension. It's got a very heavy battery pack uh, between the frame rails and it does improve the handling of this truck. You feel the weight. I mean, we're, we're pushing around a 7,000 pound truck. It's definitely heavy, but not quite as heavy as the GMC Hummer EV, which is, you know, the other, you know, lifestyle truck to kind of consider. Although this is really designed and meant for, you know, regular Joes who actually need to do truck things. Although. If you guys remember videos and like reviews of this vehicle while people were towing, it essentially cuts the range in half. So in terms of towing, if you actually plan to need to tow heavy loads on longer distances, you probably shouldn't consider a fully electric truck until the infrastructure gets better and Ford works on the range loss when you are charging or when you are towing and, and for this vehicle. But overall, the steering feels pretty much like every other F-150. It's very light and devoid of feel. The vehicle itself is no bigger than a regular F-150, so it's if you're used to driving around a half-ton truck, this is going to feel pretty much at home. I mean, other than the fact that there's no engine noise and you feel a slightly lower center of gravity, it essentially just feels like a regular F-150, which is a very good thing because not everybody wants to drive around in a truck that feels like a spaceship. Now this truck does have a one pedal drive feature and I have that turned on now. It essentially means you can just take your foot off the brake and it provides regen braking and it'll slow the vehicle down to a stop actually. Uh, and it'll hold you there, which is nice. Not every brand does that. So it's a little inconsistent now between how the brands interpret one pedal drive. But I actually do like the F-150 Lightnings. I think Ford did a good job with the programming of it. Uh, but let's go ahead and try one more run here. I just wanna see if we can get a little bit faster time versus the 4.1 that I got so far. This time I'm not gonna brake torque I'm just gonna floor it <laughs> tunnel vision <laughs> it's scary how 4.16 so same time very consistent performance and it's just crazy how a vehicle that's this big this heavy like this unaerodynamic can accelerate so quickly but that's kind of the beauty about EVs but uh, just driving around the regular f-150 or the lightning f-150 around like it's pretty easy to get used to the way this thing drives it's uh it's very smooth, it's very quiet, it has plenty of power, and you don't even need to go for the extended range battery. Honestly, I've had a chance to also drive the standard battery, and that one is also just almost as fast. I think it's like only like a half a second slower, zero to 60 versus this model. So you don't really need, really need the extended range battery for the performance, you really need it for the range. And that's where the F-150 Lightning does 
trail its newer competitors. I mean, there's the Rivian R1T, uh, which gets in the 300 to 400 mile range. There's the new Silverado EV, which can do up to 400 miles of range. Um, you know, this vehicle here is rated at 300 miles of range. I mean, you can also go up to go down to a Lariat. It'll do 320 miles of range, which is fine. I mean, that that number was great two years ago. But I feel like with these electric trucks, the new the new target should be 400 miles, considering how big these vehicles there are, how big the batteries can be. 400 miles should be the new norm. And in my week's worth of testing, this truck only averaged around 240 miles of range on a full charge. It actually showed around 313 when it was fully charged, but the range gasometer is a little optimistic and it's also been kind of like in the 40 degree temps in my week that I've been driving this car. So in the real world, I've only been averaging around 240 miles of range. That is not great. That is a little disappointing. And the 22 inch wheels on this model, they do lower the range, although you do have great ride quality with the uh, fully independent suspension. You really don't feel the fact that you have these big 22s. But I suspect, you know, if I, whenever I get a chance to drive like a Rivian R1T or the Silverado EV or the uh, Sierra EV, I suspect those models should do a little bit better. The Hummer EV also did better, but that also has a battery pack that's like 212 kilowatt hours versus 131. Um, Ford is probably going to be working on improving the range, improving the charging speed at some point. I mean, they are going to be adopting the NAC Tesla charger and you'll be able to, in the spring of 2024, go take your Lightning to a Tesla charging station. You can use one of their supercharging networks. Uh, but overall, I still like the way the Lightning drives. I think it's, you know, it looks super conventional. It's got a massive frunk that's super practical. The interior is comfortable. I'm sitting here, you know, with the seats, which aren't massaging, unfortunately, because if you guys want to platinum during this moment, they're for, for, for some reason is removing the massaging seats. But there's plenty of space on the inside. The Sync 4 infotainment system works well, although it still kind of lags at times. Although it's crazy to me that a 15 and a half inch screen is actually on the average side to slightly smaller side because you know the GM twins now have a 17.7 inch screen, which is just nuts to me. But there's still plenty to like about this F-150 Lightning and, and really it's just gonna come down to the fact that if you guys actually do need to tow and do truck things, this is where I would say skip this car, this truck. It is really good as an EV to do you know, e you know truck things that don't really involve towing because the towing really cuts the range in half. But if you do need to actually you know use the frunk, you know, use it as a fast electric truck and you occasionally you need to put stuff in the bed, this is where the lightning kind of comes into play. And because of the the you know lower demand for EVs, Ford has stacked a bunch of incentives incentives on this truck as of this filming, where some trims will let you basically take off $7,500 off the asking price right when you are purchasing it from a dealership. So after spending a full week with the most expensive version of the F-150 Lightning, I have to say everything that I liked about the Lightning when I first had a chance to drive it nearly two years ago is still obviously apparent. I love the fact that Ford essentially gave us a truck that looks like every other F-150 with some subtle differences to show that you have a fully electric model. The frunk is one of my favorite features. The interior continues to be really spacious with some great tech. It's really, really quick. Zero to 60 in just over four seconds is insane. Uh, and the range of this truck is probably where I have my biggest issue because in my actual week's worth of testing, I was only getting around 240 to 250 miles of real world range. That is obviously less versus the 300 that the EPA is estimating. And if you guys actually plan to tow, I've seen reports of the range being cut in half. I haven't had a chance to test that out myself. I don't really do much towing, but it is a big problem that people are seeing for those of you who are actually considering an electric truck who actually need to do towing things. And that's kind of where the industry needs to kind of work on fixing that problem. Now, if you guys are looking to get your hands on an F-150 Lightning, the, the good news is, is because uh, electric vehicle demand has started to drop very, very significantly, you can actually pick one of these up for a re reasonable deal. Ford offers as much as $7,500 cash on the hood, which is essentially a discount you can take from the dealership as soon as you purchase the vehicle. Now that those rebates do expire at the beginning of January, 2024. So as of this filming, you can take up to $7,500 off this vehicle. Plus of course the $7,500 that you can get in terms of a federal tax credit. I think the leases that I saw started around $560 for the pro around hundred dollars more for the XLT, the Lariat's around $800 a month. And this right here is around a thousand a month. That's a lease with a, a 36 month lease uh, with around five to $10,000 down. Of course, that's depending on your credit score and how, you, uh, how, how many of these are available in your actual dealership shop stock. 
Uh, the base pricing, if you guys don't want to lease, you want to buy a Lightning. Ford at one point started at around $40,000, just under 40 grand for the Lightning when they first came out. That price has changed significantly. There was one time where Ford increased the price by $20,000. Now they've cut the price again, and the base Lightning Pro, which includes all-wheel drive, starts at just under $50,000 as of this filming, like $49,995. If you guys want the XLT, it's about $5,000 more, around mid-50s. A Lariat trim is going to be in the $60,000 range, and if you guys want basically the extended range battery pack, it's around $7,500 extra, so you have to pay extra for that. On the Lariat, it includes a couple of other things. This Platinum grade includes basically everything, including like a Bang & Olufsen stereo, the extended range battery pack, the 22-inch wheels, massaging seats as well. However, because of production restraint or constraints, they have removed the onboard scales and the massaging seats and the heated steering wheel off of this model here. Uh, so as tested, when they factor in that discount, this truck here comes to $97,000, a little over 97 grand. Now keep in mind, there's a $7,500 rebate or basically cash on the hood from Ford on this truck right here. So you could essentially take that off that $97,000 sticker price. But my personal recommendation, if you guys don't plan to tow a lot and you want an electric F-150 Lightning, I probably would go for the Lariat trim and just add the extended range, range battery pack. Uh, with the $5,000 rebate that Ford has or cash on the hood for the Lariat, you're looking at around $75,000 for that truck. The MSRP is around eighty dollars which is still a good chunk of money. You can also subtract $7,500 from that. So keep in mind, this is still going to cost you extra for a Lightning versus a gas-powered F-150. But for those of you who must have one, it's really great to see that there are finally deals on this truck because there was at one point when this truck first came out, dealers were charging insane markups, but obviously those days are gone. So if you guys are in the market for an electric truck, the Lightning is definitely one of the most conventional out there. Just know that a lot of the competitors are coming out very soon and they will have more range and similar acceleration with a more unique kind of spaceship feel and design versus what Ford does with their conventional look on the F-150. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2024 F-150 Lightning Platinum. If you're also looking to see the latest trucks I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Yeah.